Hi, this is the syllabus discussion for uh, CIT 161 for both sections 19Z1 and 19Z3 uh, for the spring 2021 semester. Uh, my name is Wayne Beach. I'm your instructor. Uh, normally I'd give some information about myself, but I've already posted the instructor uh, bio to the Blackboard shell, so if you haven't um, watched that yet, it contains information about myself. Um, if you need to contact me, um, the best way and listed as the preferred method is via email to wayne.beach, that's B-E-E-C-H dot like the tree, um, at kctcs.edu. Um, I do have a phone number listed, that's my office number at the University of Kentucky and it does have voicemail. Uh, I will hear that voicemail if you leave it, uh, but if you want the quickest response possible, uh, sending email to me uh, will get that quick response. Um, as far as office hours, everything's virtual for this class. Um, if we need to have a discussion, we can do that over Zoom or over Teams. Um, as far as virtual communications, um, last semester I did the discussion of the syllabus um, on a Teams meeting uh, for a team that had all the students in the class, and we, we did a survey to schedule a time, and it ended up that only two or three people attended, so I didn't see a lot of value um, in doing that this semester, so I decided just to record a uh, discussion of the syllabus. Um, as I had done prior to last semester, and that's what this is. Um, as far as the area coordinator and our assistant dean for our division, uh, Robert Cherwa is the coordinator, and Lauren Campbell is the assistant dean, and um, their information, their contact information, is listed there as well as the CIT. Uh, department uh, website. Um, here are some websites that you probably already know about. Bluegrass.kctcs.edu is for BCTC. Um, Elearning.kctcs.edu is Blackboard, which um, all of you presumably already know. A lot of you have already uh, checked in on the class and, and started doing some of the assignments. And a relatively new thing is something called MyPath. Uh, for students, um, it will have student services like the student self-serve, links to email, uh, links to Starfish, um, that type of thing, things that students might need to uh, look at. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire syllabus to you. What's listed here in this section is the official uh, course description. Uh, this is an, an intro to networking. Uh, sometimes this class is referred to as Cisco 1 uh, because it's the first class in the Cisco CCNA uh, sequence. Um, if you watch information on the CCNA, the video I've already uploaded, uh, this used to be four classes and they kind of rearranged the curriculum. And it's now three classes that you go through um, to get qualified to take your CCNA, which is Cisco certified network associate exam. Um, as far as prerequisites, um, all of you registered, therefore you should meet these uh, prerequisites. I didn't get any requests uh, this semester for consent of the instructor, uh, but those are the official prerequisites and co-requisites uh, for the course. Uh, the course competencies are basically if you participate in the class, do the assignments, get a good grade, these are a list of things that you should be able to explain or do uh, related to uh, the Intro to Network class. As far as uh, class materials, um, you'll need a computer that is capable of running Packet Tracer. Talk a little bit more about Packet Tracer um, a little further down in the syllabus. Uh, currently they have versions of Packet Tracers uh, or Packet Tracer which will run on Windows. 
uh, Mac OS and Linux based uh, computers. Uh, they've had Windows and Linux for a long time. Mac OS 10 is a relatively new addition. Uh, you will need to be able to get to Blackboard, uh, which looks like you, a lot of you have already logged in. Uh, you are provided email by KCTCS, uh, so you can use that. You can use um, uh, private email as well, but an email account is provided to you. Uh, if we have um, lectures, there are going to be videos that you need. If we have meetings, uh, then you will need a webcam. Uh, you may also need a webcam for the, the proctored exams uh, that we'll talk about a little later. Uh, you know, you're not capable, even though there is a version of Packet Tracer that runs on mobile phones, um, it would be uh, not a pleasant experience um, to, to use. So you really need to have a computer and, like it says, with high-speed uh, internet. Uh, you're expected to have all of these. If you do not have these at home, um, you, you know, let me know, but you should be able to go to the computer labs when campus is open or go to a public library or other places uh, to gain access to these technologies uh, to be able to do um, your homework. Uh, as far as required textbook, uh, there's really no required textbook because all the content that would be in the textbook is available online through uh, the Networking Academy located at natacad.com. That's where you'll be reading the curriculum or reading the modules slash chapters. Um, you'll be getting your assignments, your labs, your packet tracers, things like that. Um, you will get those in netacad.com, and I've already put out an intro to netacad uh, video that uh, you need to watch to know how to go through and do that. Now then, under optional textbook, there is a physical book um, that came out recently uh, that is a physical copy. Some people just prefer books instead of reading things online. Uh, Maybe not so much the case now with COVID-19, but a lot of times people traveled for work, and if they flew, you know, they might want a physical copy of the book to carry with them on the plane or to the hotel, um, so they would be able to, to stay up to date in the course. Um, there are different ways you'll be submitting your homework via PDF. Uh, your homework three, I believe it is, is um, print to PDF. Uh, but sometimes you need to get images scanned or uh, need a way to um, create a PDF. And here's some uh, document scanner uh, software um, that are free that will um, combine things into a single PDF document, let you take pictures with your phone, uh, etc. So you may or may not need those, but um, uh, somebody went through the effort to look at these, and um, so I, I passed this list on as possibly being helpful. As far as class policies and expectation, uh, you know, as far as attendance, we're not meeting in person, and, you know, don't plan to have regularly scheduled class virtual uh, meetings, but you're really just responsible for keeping up to date. Uh, with assignments, um, and that would include checking Blackboard um, at least once a day for new assignments and uh, announcements, that type of thing. Um, all classes have a no-show uh, policy. If it's an in-person class, if you do not attend one of the first two class meetings, you can be withdrawn from that class and listed as a no-show. Um, as far as online classes, they specify a date, which this semester is January 21st, by which if you don't complete some activity that I have you do, you can be dropped as a no-show. And that activity is homework zero. 
Um, it's been out there since a day or two before the semester started. Um, and basically, it is a, quote, test that has you say, I think the question is something like, I have read and understand and understood the syllabus and ask any questions I might have had about it, true, false. So you actually have to take that and um, submit it. If you do not do that by January 21st, then you will be dropped as a no-show, removed from the roster, and not able to get back um, in the course. So that's uh, very important that you complete that activity. Uh, as far as the email policy, um, you know, check your email regularly, at least once a day is recommended. Uh, but more importantly, if you send me email, uh, you need to have a good subject. And that good subject will include the course name, CIT 161, and then some information about what you need. So for example, here's a really good subject line. I know you're in my 161 class, and I know you're having a problem with Packet Tracer Activity 2.3.4. Uh, you know, simply sending something like help, or something like that um, doesn't really tell me anything about what you need help with. Um, so please make sure you have a meaningful subject, and again, one that includes CIT 161. Um, academic integrity policy um, is outlined in the Code of Conduct. Um, basically, for some number of years now, KCTCS has had no no cheating, uh, zero tolerance uh, policy, which is if you submit work uh, from somebody else or somebody else does your homework, uh, it's an e in, automatic E in the course. And it is also, I believe, an E that cannot be removed from your transcripts. Uh, as far as class requirements, this is... Um, information about some of the different types of assignments that you will be doing throughout the semester. Uh, you will have homeworks. Um, three of them have already been placed out there. Uh, but these are assignments that are created by me and then given to you to complete and turn back in. Um, in the curriculum, we will have packet tracer activities, which I mentioned before. Uh, basically, you have a piece of software named Packet Tracer that is a network simulator. It can simulate switches and routers and PCs and different other types of um, networking equipment. And a large number of your assignments this semester will be uh, Packet Tracer uh, activities. Uh, there also in your curriculum will be labs. Uh, you know, these labs, sometimes you'll be using your personal computer. Sometimes you'll be going out and researching information um, on the web. So these are hands-on on your equipment as opposed to simulated equipment um, on the, the packet tracer software. Um, this is just kind of a rant, kind of an annoyance of mine. When I first started teaching Cisco like 15 years ago, they called everything a module. And then finally, after some number of years, they started calling them chapters, which made me really, really happy. And they were called chapters for seven or eight years. Well, as of about a year ago, they went back to using module. So if you hear module chapter, uh, they'll be used interchangeably. I'll try to say modules because that matches up with the, the curriculum better. Uh, used to, you had a, a chapter exam or a module exam um, after every chapter. Uh, what they have now is module group exams and they're multi-module quizzes. So uh, your, your first module group exam, I believe is over modules one, two, three, and four. Um, so after we um, complete chapter four, and you've had time to complete your assignment, you will be assigned uh, these module group exams, and they're on the netacad.com website. Um, as far as exams, um, you will have a midterm exam 
that is created by me. Um, it will be administered in Blackboard. Um, it will probably be proctored. More on that in the next section. Um, you will have a final exam that is created by Cisco, and that will be administered over netacad.com. Also, possibly uh, uh, proctored. Um, there is a practice final exam that kind of gives you some idea what your final exam will look like. You'll take that at the very end of the semester, and whatever grade you get on the practice final will be averaged in uh, with your average of your uh, module group exams. As of last semester, we have some new software called Proctorio. Uh, when it gets time to give an exam, uh, I will give you more information, but basically it's a Chrome uh, web browser plug-in, uh, and you will need a webcam and a microphone um, to, to use uh, the system. Uh, the nice thing about this compared to ProctorU, which we used in the past, is you don't have to schedule an appointment. When the exam's available, you can just go take it. And also in the past, if you wanted to use Proctor, uh, ProctorU instead of going to a testing center, uh, there was a cost to the student of $25 or $35 if they waited till the last minute to schedule the exam. Um, KCTCS or BCTC, I'm not sure which one, is actually paying the fee for Proctorio. Um, so there will be no cost to you um, if we use uh, this software. Um, when I give assignments, you've probably already noticed I give an, a, a date that I expect it to be due. I set the due time to 11.59 p.m. Um, and I expect um, the assignment to be completed and uploaded to uh, Blackboard uh, prior to that time. Um, if you have something that would not classify as an excused absence and, um, you know, for some reason you need to turn it in late, uh, please let me know. I'll decide if that's an acceptable uh, reason uh, to do that. And, you know, there may or may not be a penalty depending upon the circumstance. Uh, you know, one thing that came to mind is last semester I had a, a female student who was pregnant and had her baby in the middle of the semester. And um, on a couple of assignments, um, she needed an extra week um, around the delivery of her baby, uh, which was fine. Um, so, you know, talk to me if it's going to be late and we'll decide. Uh, what we can do about that. Um, KCTCS has started using midterm grades as of a year and a half or so ago. Um, there's a midterm date, um, I think it's the Monday of spring break this year, uh, by which I post midterm grades, which are basically, if I had to give you a grade right now based on the work you submitted, uh, what grade would I give you? Uh, so that gives you some idea how you're doing at the midpoint of the semester. Um, as far as the final grade for the course, your official grade, uh, this is how it breaks down. We've discussed what these were earlier. But your module group exam and your practice final, take the average of that. That's 40% of your grade. Uh, kind of amazes me. I've had students in the past who haven't worried about the module group exams too much. And I tell them over and over, this is 40% of your grade. If you don't do it, you get an E um, because that takes you down to a 60. Um, you will have a Cisco online multiple choice, uh, possibly packet tracer uh, questions, but they'll still be multiple choice answers. That's 20% of your grade. Um, any homeworks, labs, or packet tracer activities I assign, I'll average those together. That'll be 20% of your grade. And then your midterm exam, again, of my making, will be 20% uh, of your final grade. Um, as far as grading scale, this is a traditional 90 to 100 will get an A, 80 to 89 will get a B. Um, 
this is the quote hardest the grading scale will be. In reality what I do is I calculate the final grades, I post them on a graph, and then I decide if there needs to be any change in the breakpoints. For example, if I have some students who got 88s, 89s, 90s, uh, 91 and above, and then after that um, 88, the next grade's an 84. Um, I'm going to say, okay, fine, 88 and up gets an A. So sometimes in the AB range, um, occasionally in the BC range, there might be what you might think of as a slight curve, uh, but it will not be any harder or any worse than the grading scale listed here. Um, as far as withdrawal policy, um, you probably know that uh, up to the mid-term uh, date or the midpoint of the semester, uh, you can just go in and uh, withdraw on your own. Um, after that midpoint, you have to have my permission. Um, you have to withdraw from the class by the last day of the regular semester. Uh, so that Friday before finals week is, is the break point. Um, and they're, they're pretty um, strict on that date. Um, years ago, I had a really good student who was on track to get an A, and he just disappeared. And I emailed him over and over again, hey, what's up? He never answered, never answered. And then um, Friday night, you know, the deadline would be 4.30 or 5 whenever BCTC closes. About 8 o'clock that night, I get an email uh, from a girl, and she's like, hey, student X of yours, um, and I, th I think it was his girlfriend or fiance, and it was like, um, he's been in jail, and he decided he really didn't want to fail all of his classes, so can he have your permission to withdraw? So I told him, I said, well, technically that had to be done about three hours ago. Um, I don't know how strict they are, but if the registrar will let you do it, I will give his permission uh, for him to withdraw from the class. And shortly after 8 a.m., um, I get an email from the registrar's office that's like, nope, um, you missed the deadline or he missed the deadline. He's going to get an E in the class. Um, so, you know, there, it's important uh, that you know what your, what your deadlines are uh, or it can have bad consequences. Uh, most of the policies and resources are available via this link that is shown. Uh, as far as um, accommodations that might need to be made in the classroom, uh, those are made with the, the Disability Support Services Office, not with me directly. Um, if somebody needs an accommodation in the classroom, I get an official email from them that identifies the students and identifies the accommodations that I need to make in the, in the classroom. So if that applies to you and you have not talked to DSS, here's their um, contact information. Um, we've had on-campus tutoring um, for quite some time now, and usually the tutors are able to tutor uh, for CIT 161 as well as a number of other classes. Um, here's some links here on how to schedule an appointment uh, with the tutor. Uh, Thinking Storm is something that, that is kind of new, uh, but some of the tutors uh, will tutor virtually. Um, so if you get stuck or need some reinforcement, need some tutoring, uh, keep, keep this in mind. Like I said, more um, information on Proctorio when we get closer to the midterm exam. But some here's some information on how to uh, get help um, and you know the you'll check this out I'll give you assignment to check out and make sure you can use the software before you really need to take the midterm but 
if you have trouble with that or you're having trouble um, actually taking the midterm, um, here's some contact information. Um, I'm pretty sure this contact information also is available via the, the plugin to Chrome. Um, this doesn't really apply to you because this is a fully 100% online class, but they told us it had to be in the syllabus. This will, if you have in-person classes, um, imply to you, or sorry, apply to you. So if something happens and campus closes because of um, COVID-19 again, your learning will be switched to virtual. And this is some information about that. Uh, this is also in there. You should already be familiar with this. Uh, but this is just saying this is the habit you should get into because if we switch to from an in-person class uh, to an online class, these are things that you need to know how to use. Um, it's all pretty straightforward and stuff that we will already be using in our class. Um, so that's everything except the tentative course schedule. Um, this is um, what we will approximately be doing uh, week to week in the class. Uh, we should stick pretty close to this. We might get a little behind, might get a little ahead, but for the most part I think this is uh, what we'll be doing. Um, your midterm exam will be proctored and given, administered the Monday through Thursday, the week before spring break. Um, we do have a spring break still, um, during which you'll have no assignments. Uh, UK, for example, this semester, they delayed the start of their school two or three weeks and are not giving the student a spring break. Uh, and that's again gives them a bigger winter break for COVID-19 to hopefully go down and doesn't give them a week that they might decide to go to Florida somewhere and cause a spike in um, COVID cases. But uh, KCTCS decided to keep the spring break in the schedule. And then when we finish the semester out, your, your finals, uh, Finals week is the 3rd through 7th of May. Uh, your exam will be available for you to take from that Monday through Thursday again, which is May 3rd uh, to May 6th. So that ends the discussion. Um, hopefully you've already read the syllabus or at least glanced at it. Um, but if you still have any questions or questions about anything I said here, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email.